After the Swedish company Overkill Software took over the world as creators of one of the strongest heist games, Payday the Heist, they now have teamed up with 505 Games and Battlefield developer David Goldfarb to create the ever-awaited sequel, Payday 2. But does the sequel have a chance of going above and beyond the previous title? Let's take a look. The story of Payday 2 is very ambiguous indeed. There is no absolute reason why you are robbing banks, jewelry stores, painting museums, and the like. In some cases, you could think that the returning characters Hoxton, Wolf, Dallas, and Chains are doing this to get back at the banks and corrupt corporations for feeling the rich and taking from the poor. But then why wouldn't they just get the money and give it to the poor? In all honesty, there really isn't much of a story to be had in Payday 2, much like the previous game. It's more of a loosely tied together string of events that allow the player to simply just fill in the gaps depending on how they choose to play the game. Fans looking for a deep story will find nothing of interest here. I trust you've had a vacation worthy of real heisters. You worked hard, you needed it, but you were needed once again. Ditching the Source Engine, Payday 2 cleans itself up with a brand new coat of paint. On PC, the game doesn't look fantastic, but it certainly is an improvement of Payday the Heist. The gun and character models look high quality with very realistic feeling reloads and firing animations. It's only a shame that the same can't be said for when you interact with objects throughout the world. When you decide to pick open a door, all you see is a progress bar. Same for when you're looting objects such as bags, gold, and jewelry. In some cases, it's understandable due to the fact that there is an ability that allows you to loot faster, which means animations would have to be sped up, thus potentially breaking the animation altogether. Although, it would have been awesome to see regardless. Payday 2 also features an FOV slider, although it's not very clear as to the degree of which you can go. Is it 90 FOV or 110? That is the maximum. Well, I'm not sure. However, with the max... I had absolutely no problems in the end. The game also features limited options for texture quality, animations, anisotropic filtering, and depth of field. However, the depth of field kind of breaks when you use your FOV at the maximum, so I suggest turning it off. It certainly doesn't feel like there was a lot of love thrown into the options menu. However, with these limited options, fans that can run Source Engine games on their machines shouldn't have any problems running this for it's not a major increase in quality. With Payday the Heist, the biggest thing that was missing from it was the ability to fully run through a heist without the cops ever knowing that you were there, or at least only find out after you are long gone from the scene. Sure, there was Diamond Heist, but that just wasn't enough to satisfy players to just keep doing that one over and over again. Luckily, Overkill heard the outcry and has made nearly every mission in Payday 2 100% stealthable. Sure, there's still missions out there that are impossible to stealth, but these are very few in number. As the first title only had around 7 heists at the initial release, Payday 2 went above and beyond and unleashed 30 brand new heists. Some of these new heists, however, are mixed in with multi-day heists that are a new feature within the franchise. Players will be able to choose their heist of choice on an extremely annoying map that takes an extremely long time to show off heists that you are looking for. Overkill has decided to stop players from farming by removing their drop-down lists, which has thus turned the ability to practice heists into a long, boring wait for the heists you want to show up. When you finally get into a heist, either by joining a public game or creating one with your friends, you are greeted with a pleasant surprise of how responsive and weighty the guns feel when you're fighting relentless hordes of badass coppers trying to rain on your parade. Fans of Battlefield 3's weaponry will feel right at home with these weapons here. Luckily, there's quite a few of weapons to switch between, like shotguns, assault rifles, some machine guns, and pistols. After each heist, you will then earn money that you can then spend to purchase new skills, weapons, and parts. 
You will also earn experience points to level up, which will then earn you skill points to put into four different categories. Mastermind, Enforcer, Technician, and Ghost. Each with their own unique set of traits that can change the course of a heist drastically if it's put into the right hands. In addition to that, you also obtain a random card at the end of each successful heist that will give you cash, weapon parts, new masks, decals, and paints. This randomness can be a tad infuriating at times when you're trying to get a certain scope for your weapon and no matter how many cards you turn over, you just can't seem to get the one you need. Masks are back and this time completely redone. Your mask is who you are so you can now pick what your mask is made out of, what kind of color it is, and the different symbols you want on it. Players also have access to a safe house that they can use to practice opening doors, opening safes, and shooting at targets to test their weapons. However, as of right now, Overkill hasn't added the ability to buy items for your safe house just yet, but they have mentioned they'll be adding some in the coming months. Now in the end, even though all that sounds awesome, if you're hoping to go stealth within Payday 2, you are going to need friends. Public games just don't cut it. You'll almost always get someone that's impatient and just wants to get it over with. The game does however reward skill and a team of two can pull off beautiful heists better than a team of four. And nothing feels better than pulling off the perfect heist, knowing that you'll be making hundreds of thousands of dollars without any hassle at all. The game however did come out with its fair share of bugs, none were game breaking luckily, but they were quite annoying at the time. Luckily, many bugs have been fixed as of update 5, so if you've waited patiently, you shouldn't run into too many problems now. The developers have been very good about patching their game up extremely fast, and plenty of nerfs and buffs to various abilities have already been done. It's certainly nice to see the game being refined so quickly. Although Payday 2 has its fair share of hiccups every now and again, and the fact that it's near impossible to stealth in random pubs, it still offers a glorious experience when you gather your friends and pull off the world's greatest heist, knowing that it was your efforts that made it happen. The customization of your masks and weapons is certainly a nice addition as well. The incredible fast-paced updates Overkill is turning out shows that you have a game with caring developers that listen and know what you want. And that's what gives Payday 2 a 4 out of 5. Even for you, that was a hell of a win. Let's get this stuff to the boat so we can get our payday on. So there you have it, Payday 2. I know I've been gone for quite a while, but hopefully I'm back and running again with some new reviews coming soon. My Splinter Cell Blacklist review shouldn't be too far away now either. But before I go, I'd like to know what is your favorite heist within the Payday series? Be sure to leave a comment below. That's all folks, thank you very much for watching, I'm Akabane101 and I'll see you next time.